Edwards and welcome back to Craft the Story. In this week's episode, we are going to talk about day in the life. Now, last week, uh, episode three, if you guys were here for that, we talked about albums and my philosophy about scrapbook albums and album organization. We talked a bunch about all of those kinds of things, but today I want to dive deeper into talking about a project that I do every year called Day in the Life. And the first documenting day for Day in the Life is coming up on Tuesday, March 9th. Um, we like to do a community documenting day where we tell you what the date is and then we can all do it together. Uh, it's great for community building, it's great for accountability, uh, it's great for just being able to participate um, globally with a like-minded group of people who are documenting the story of their life uh, on the same day. Now, if March 9th doesn't work for you, that is not a problem at all. You can do this kind of project at any point in time. So the purpose of the video today is that I want to talk a little bit about all the different ways I have done this Day in the Life project. Um, over the years, I have done scrapbook layouts, I've done inserts into Project Life, I've done mini albums, I've done... Um, three by eight albums, and this year I'm going to be doing a four by six album. Earlier this week, we had our product collection release, so depending on when you're watching this video, some of those products may be available to you. We also have a, um, a good selection of digital Day in the Life products, as well as some products from past Day in the Life collections if you need some to support your storytelling this time. What I really want to do here though is that we're going to dive in and we're going to take a look at the different ways that I have approached this project. Essentially this project is a one day documenting project. You get up in the morning, you record what you do over the course of the day, and you finish up in the evening. Now like I said I've done this a variety of different ways and we'll talk about that as we look through some of the different uh, the ways that I've brought these, these stories to life. Uh, sometimes we do different story lenses, we look at it, look at the day a different way. When I first started doing it, it was almost always wake up in the morning and start taking pictures and then take pictures over the course of the day. As I have evolved as a memory keeper, as the project has evolved for our community, uh, many of us have come to find that we really like having a specific story lens to use to identify stories throughout the course of the day. What that does is it makes it a little bit simpler rather than thinking, oh my gosh, I want to document every single thing that's happened over the course of the day. And it gives you, it narrows things down just a little bit that can, can actually be um, a really nice way to simplify the process, right? When when you have something more specific and more directed in terms of the stories that you're looking for, sometimes that can actually just simplify the process overall. And I wouldn't just say sometimes, I would say most of the time that's the case. So we'll talk about some of those different story lenses uh, as we go along here. So let's start off by looking at one. This is from 2009. Uh, I think that this may be this is potentially one of the earliest, but I think that there might be um, a few others in my earlier earlier albums. I couldn't find them uh, right off the bat, but I have a variety of different ones to show you. So this example here is a two page 12 by 12 spread. This is actually in an album that is um, all the projects that I created for one of our workshops called Yesterday and Today that I did again many years ago. Uh, it is a great one to go back to or to take if you've never taken it before to really encourage you to document your own story. It's a lot about the stories from the past. I'll just flip through some of these briefly. The Yesterday and Today workshop also comes with a, some digital templates and other things to help you um, to help you tell the story in a very directed way, meaning it has like these, these sorts of things are in there so that you can print them out to create these pages um, along the way. So stories from the past, so stories that I remembered from my childhood were in there, um, a story from today at that point in time, so telling some of the more challenging stories. Um, 
this one is a yesterday and today, right? So it was a, it was today was, this was Anna at that point in time paired with a picture of me back then. Um, it talks about using pockets. Again, this is back from 2009. Uh, it talks about the, the topic or the just story jumping off point, which is you should know kind of what are the things that I would like uh, my kids to know, excuse me. And I did it in a couple, there's a couple different versions that I've included in this album that I used as examples to share in the class. Um, then there's one that's I have learned. So again, full page of words there, right? Paired with a full page of some sort of decoration. Uh, again, another one that's a yesterday and today. So here's one of my mom and I, um, and then me with Anna in the sink. Uh, another one that's using a variety of old photos. So pairing very old family photos that merged into newer ones. Again, templates are available in that workshop and all the how-tos showing you exactly how I did all of that is in there. This one's called The Unexpected Life, which talks a little bit about um, learning of Simon's autism diagnosis and what that felt like and pairing that with a photo of myself when I was younger. Um, there is one about perspective, and this is using a... Um, pocket page protector and the time at the time that I did this workshop too this was before uh, project life had I think even been launched if I remember correctly um, so using divided page protectors for that there's a bunch of notes um, and then that brings us to this idea of day in the life and this is a lesson that's included in the yesterday and today workshop um, in terms of talking about it as a, uh, a really valuable documenting tool when you go to tell stories about your life. So in the case of this day, this particular day, I just took photos over the course of the day and wrote down what was happening at specific times. Uh, back in 2009, things were not as the same as they are today uh, in terms of digital cameras and that sort of thing. So most of these were all would have all been taken on my bigger camera and it pops up in some of the pictures but basically what I did in my journaling here is I started at 6 a.m. and just used time as the organizational structure for the story so there's a 6 a.m. and there's a whole big thing that I wrote about what were the basics what did it look like at 6 a.m. at that point in time 8 30 it's got all these different time periods um, I'm gonna read you the 6 a.m. part just so you can hear a little bit about what life looked like for me at that point in time. And these are the kinds of things that I wanna document in um, this day in the life uh, format. Buzzer alarm, go wake up Simon, find him with his PJs off because he got too hot in the middle of the night. Chris was already up and out at 5 a.m. to catch a flight to DC. I asked Simon, uh, toast or bagel buddy, toast in the toaster, start coffee. Um, here, Anna, go in and feed her and she is up for the day. Fix toast, OJ, and vitamins for Simon and set the table. Uh, take Anna in to help wake up Simon. Happy wake up with her there to make him smile. Good morning, sister, in quotations, and gives her a big hug. So it's definitely very detailed in this one, right? So I'm gonna show you a variety of different ways that I've done it. So sometimes I do keep it super detailed like that. I really want those um, everyday sorts of things, which, you know, looks way different however many years, you know, 10 year, 10 plus years later um, now. So that's the structure of this one, right? Over the course of the day, I took photos. You don't have to take 500 photos for this project. Uh, it's really gonna depend on what your end result is going to look like. Are you going to do it in a layout like this? Are you going to do it um, in pocket pages, which you're gonna see some examples of that uh, as well. So it can absolutely be done in a traditional layout uh, format, especially if you just wanna participate with, you know, along with the community on that day. So. I generally write more in the morning than I do uh, in the evening, and that's kind of just me personally. Uh, let's go ahead and look at another one. Here's some other just seeing me. This was, a lot. again, this was from uh, the yesterday and today workshop. That's, this is the one that I was flipping through, but let's go, um, let's move forward in time and see another example of what this project can look like. Over the years, I have included 
day in the life within my weekly project life albums in a couple of different ways. Back in 2013, which you're gonna see here, I actually did day in the life monthly. Um, at this point in time in 2021, last year I think I did it twice too, I'm doing it twice a year. So I usually do it at one time in the first half of the year and then one time in the second half of the year so that I can capture uh, a couple different seasons. But again, in 2013 I decided to do it once a month and it was a fun way to uh, go a little bit deeper in terms of that everyday life storytelling where you're where you're telling the story of the full day like what were the all the different things that happened over the course of the full day so i'm just flipping through here in the in january to get to the first one so the first one that i did um in 2013 was um, by time again, so focusing on time. I think time is one of the easiest ways to approach this project. Uh, as the years have gone by, one of the ways that people have found uh, to make this project simpler is to set alarms for your phone. You can set an alarm to go off every hour on your phone to remind you to take a picture, to remind you to jot some notes down. I think doing it hourly is a super approachable way um, to participate in this project, but you can also do it more randomly. And I think it just depends on what um, what your own availability is and what kinds of stories you are hoping to tell over the course of the day. So in 2013, we weren't we didn't have products for this project. We weren't selling any specific um, physical products, but we did have digital products. And we do still have uh, these available in the shop templates and I'll, I'll link them for you below the video. But here you can see I did it as essentially a six by 12 insert in Project Life. One side of here has the full or a big photo um, with the January and then I've simply just added in much less detail than I showed you in the last one um, from 2009. So this is literally like 6.08 a.m. Anna coughing and into my bed, 6.10 a.m. downstairs, feed animals, Anna turns on all the lights, let Lily, that was our dog at the time, outside, turn on dryer, toaster waffle and toaster for Simon, and then it just kind of goes in that way over the, the course of the rest of the day. Now, I would say that when I was doing this monthly, I didn't feel the same um, desire necessarily to capture as much information because I was spreading it out and doing it 12 times over the course of the year. Uh, that felt like it gave me a little bit more flexibility to, you know, if I miss something one month, I'll catch it the following month, right? And you can use that um, as information to figure out how you want to approach this as well. Maybe one time you just focus on the morning or another time you focus on the afternoon or another time you focus on the evening. Essentially, those become story lenses for, for Day in the Life. So then what I did is I just had the pictures on the back. So for this particular Day in the Life, I just added in, what is that, five, six pictures. The, the fifth or the, excuse me, I can count, four, four pictures. And um, this one here is a text uh, message um, that I added in there, screenshotted that and added in there. All right, let's look at February just as a couple different examples here. I believe that I was using the same template. Let's see if I did it. It doesn't see, unless it's not in here. Let's, maybe I did it every couple months. I'll find another one here. Flipping through, here we go. Here's March. So March, I'm using a similar template. This time when I did it, I actually didn't even include any words. So here's an example of one where I just focused on the photos and I do have times that I added on the photos. These are uh, created in Photoshop. I'm using layered templates that we have in the shop. And then you can add your own time or additional journaling on there um, if you want to. And so here on the back, you can see that I just really simplified it. I didn't even add words to this one, which is I think, again, in the totality of all of the memory keeping I have done, it's just fine to have some that don't have a lot of words on them. So this one just simply has the times um, added onto each one of those photos. Let's see where we can find another one in here. All right, then in April, you can see I'm using that same template again. The template, what it has is it has a block on the top and then it has a space down below. You can choose what you want to put in those spaces, right? If you want to have photos there, you can have photos. If you want to have more journaling, you can have more journaling. Uh, on the back then, 
on this one what I did is I added in some observations on the top and then down below I have um, times of the day with some details added in. I'm super curious to see as I'm looking back on this now, um, did I add more journaling at different points in time during the year? These are things that I can't really remember. It looks like my approach ended up being mainly photos. Uh, and part of that, you can see all the other documenting that I was doing at that point in time when I was telling uh, weekly stories. So here's just another one where I'm simply adding on the times. This is great if you're, if you're using Project Life and you want to, or doing weekly documenting, and you still want to go a little bit deeper on one particular day, you can use a template like this to be able to add in those additional photos. Let's flip through, just find one more, and then we'll switch to something else. Yeah, okay, so here's another one where um, this looks like it's June. Did a little bit of writing on there. I've got a photo on the top, photo on the bottom, and then a variety of photos on the other side. And you can see that this time I didn't even add the numbers on there. So let's go ahead and take a look at a different way that you can approach it. Um, so that was from 2013. Like I said, I've added this into Project Life at other times, and I have some other examples of that to show you next. Actually, before I show you some more uh, examples that were included as inserts in Project Life, let me show you how I approached it in 2014. Uh, this is a time when I did a 4x4 album. These are also digital products that we have available in the shop. And we do have, I believe that there's a, a, um, a project workshop, and I'll link that for you guys as well, that goes along with this one uh, in particular that shows you how I created um, this specific one. Uh, so in this case, you can see that I'm doing it uh, by date here and time. So for many years when I, you know, for many, many of the earlier years when I was first working on this project, uh, date is really, or excuse me, time is really the way that I organized the uh, structure here. But you can see this again is using Photoshop and adding the time directly onto uh, my photo before I print the time and a little bit of the story. You can also stamp on here. You can use number stamps to stamp your time on there. Uh, that's what I ended up with this one. You can see it's pretty much all uh, digital, super clean, simple. Uh, fun way to approach it. What I'm looking for when I go to take pictures on a day in the life day is I want to take pictures that really represent what our life looks like right now. Uh, so, you know, taking a picture of Simon waking up, taking a picture of the food that I was eating, taking a picture of us sitting at the table. A lot of questions that I get about this project in particular are related to including myself in the photos, which is something that I strive to do. Um, in all of my documentation, I want to actually see myself as a piece of the overall story. So on a, on a, in a in an image like this where I'm taking a picture of the three of us sitting at the table, this would have been a point in time where there were not other people living here at the house with us. So in these cases, I am often setting a chair or I'm looking for a counter or in this case, it's probably over on the couch and I'm setting up the timer on my camera and then hustling back over and sitting down to take a picture of myself sitting at the table with everyone. Um, um, taking a picture in the car where as we are driving around dri taking kids to school this case the picture or the camera would have been sitting um, on the dashboard at this point in time I think that I was probably still using my big camera instead of my phone 2014 I'm not sure I can't really remember um, right now but here's some other just simple photos right what do they look like sitting in the car um, what was the weather like and in this case with this one again this was a digital uh, package just using handwriting to simply jot down um, things that were happening over the course of the day. And then I went back into adding the times, walking, pictures of our feet. That's another big one that I often do. It's great for something like this where you're in Target. Uh, maybe you don't want to see people take, you You know, that you don't want people to see you taking a picture. It's so much easier with our phones now because you can just stand there and look like you're doing something and you can take a picture um, of your feet there with your basket that shows the things that you're buying, right? That's information. That's a piece of the everyday story that you're living right now. 
Again, just timelines, right? There's Simon walking into school. Uh, I love that I have things like this captured, which, which seem really basic, but time goes by so fast. And you know, now Simon drives, he drives himself wherever he needs to go. I don't see him walking into places anymore like I did in the past. Um, adding in a little more journaling related to books and the library, um, the time again, time, talking about what I'm doing for work, uh, lunch, that sort of thing. And so that's the way that this one goes. So this one is a combination of journal cards, square four by four journal cards paired with um, photos with the time directly on top of there in this little four by four um, album. We don't have a four by four album like this available any longer. This was a, we are memory keepers. I don't know if, if scrapbook.com has it. They might have a four by four if you really like this size, um, or you can also use a four by six, or you can use a larger um, page protector that has square pockets and it would be another way to um, emulate something similar to that without it obviously being in its own little album. All right, now let's go and take a look at some of the other ones that I've inserted into Project Life. All right, I went into, I think four, I pulled out four different ones, 2018, this one is 2018, 2017, I think this one is also 2017, yep, 2017. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the ways that I did it in 2017, 2018. So let's start with 2017 first. Uh, these are all obviously in divided page protectors. Uh, these were the two, at least two different versions that I did in 2017. This is once we had started offering products. Um, and we do have digital versions of these available that are in the shop. If you like the designs and you want to just be able to print the cards, you can do that um, from the shop there. So this is going to be a good example and show you a little bit more about when I say a story lens, what does a story lens mean? And again, these are, I pulled them out of my Project Life albums. So this would have been within a week in 2017 is when I did um, this one. So here's one in August. And for this one, the story lens was ING words. So we had learning, we had loving, watching, eating, going. Um, feeling, wearing, and listening. So those were the cards that were included in the kit and there was also a quote card. And so I insert, as you saw if you watched the video last week, I insert lots of different page sizes into a 12 by 12 or a 9 by 12 album. In the case of this one that I did, you can see where I added photos onto the journaling cards, right? So I took these journal cards that have these headers on them and I just simply adhered photos on the top of them. And which which is a great reminder about journal cards that you can use them not just to add words directly onto, but you can also use them to ha hold your photos, right? And then you can add your journaling in a different place or you can ha put your journaling on top of your photo before you print it out. But the story lens of, <clears throat> excuse me, taking the opportunity to look for specific things over the course of the day, it's like a treasure hunt, right? A story treasure hunt. What, what are the stories that you can find that pair with these story lenses to tell a story about your day? So in this case, it was on a Saturday, and so I wrote just a little bit more about what we did um, on that day as the actual journaling, and then loved printing out um, something that we were listening to, and then this was the, it was like a one mile run that we did that day that was really fun. So that is one way that you can do it. Now here's another example. This was also from 2017. For the story lens that we used in this particular time was counting. So let's count up different things that happen for us over the course of the day. This one was really fun. So the journal cards in this case had things like steps taken. So most of us now are able to, uh, we know how many steps we take or didn't take over the course of a day. So we, I used a stamp. The, the journal card had the, the title on it plus the, the hashtag or the number symbol. And then I used a stamp to add in the number of steps taken, which that is not a good number of steps, right? So very few steps. And then I just hand wrote my journaling. So for this one, I, I started it off with a three by four or a three by eight uh, page protector. I think at this point in time, I would have just been cutting um, off the extra 
extra from a six by eight because we didn't actually have the three by eight version at that time. Then it has cups consumed, hours worked. Then I added in a big picture of myself there and another picture on the back. I think this was a happened to be a day where I was doing a lot of work or that was really the bulk of, of what I did. So sometimes I don't include a lot of pictures. Sometimes this is a great example of there's more words in this one than there are pictures compared to some of the ones that I did in the past, 2013, where some months there were more pictures than there were words. So it's just, it's a, it's a balancing game, I think, overall, um, keeping the, the totality of the story in mind. So then we also had, this one had some fun little um, uh, embellishments here that I just slipped inside of another page protector. The number of photos taken, the number of text messages sent, miles traveled was zero on that day. Um, emails sent and received, pages read, how many pages did I read in a book, and then it, I included a picture of the book that I was reading, and then laundry loads. There are, with this particular um, design, which you can find digitally, we have that you can print out, there were other options too, so you could pick the ones that made the most sense for you and your life. So it wasn't all, it didn't have to be exactly the same. You could pick the ones that uh, made the most sense. So those are um, two other ways that you can approach it, two different stories lenses. Those were from 2017. All right, so moving ahead to 2018, at that point in time, I was still including these day in the life uh, storytelling days within my Project Life album. One thing I want to point out too is that you don't have to be doing Project Life to use divided page protectors and include them in whatever album that you have set up for yourself to hold your stories. You can do it in a 6x8, you can do it in a 12x12, 12 12, you can do it in a 9x12. Uh, in 2018, the cards that we sold and the prompts that we ended up using um, for the first day, so in March we did single words. So single words as the jumping off point for your stories. We've got move, close, work, uh, play, read, love, music, and food. Similar to the ING prompts, but just a little bit different, right? It's guiding you, it's inviting you to tell specific stories um, from the course of your day. A couple things that I noticed just as I'm looking at it now, I still love the idea of adding the photos directly onto the journal cards, which is what I've done here. So I have a combination of some where I added the photos directly onto the cards, others where I added journaling onto the cards. This kit also included a sticker sheet that had um, the hours of the day on the circles, which that made it really simple. Uh, I one of the things that I saw when I was looking at this one and it I think is always a nice reminder is the journaling can be simple right and we've talked about this before um, but a lot of the ways that I approach the journaling in this one was just from a, in a list format so going about the course of my day looking for these specific things that I know that I want to document it's nice to have uh, a direction it's nice to have a, a little bit of a guide rather than feeling like you want to capture every single thing that happens over the course of your day which is probably not realistic um, for most people. So having a little bit of guide that's that a little bit of a guide, a story lens essentially, that is going to take you through the process has been really helpful for me um, over the years. And I love the combination of, again, some, some photos adhered to the card and then some added in as um, three by four photos. So that's a nine by 12 version. Then I did the next lens that we did in... Um, in, in 2018 was gratitude, which is one of my favorite lenses. I've got one of my gratitude shirts on uh, today here. And in this case, I had I wanted to write more. So the example here, you can see the journal cards were already established, right? They all said thankful for this and they had numbers on them. Uh, and then I just went ahead and took pictures over the course of the day as I thought of things that I was thankful for, you know, noticing, paying attention, which is a big part of this project in particular, right? Paying attention to your everyday life. What kinds of stories happen over the course of the day that you would want to document? Um, for me, I really do like to focus on the really basic stuff in this project in particular, especially because I do so much other documenting. Some of it, um, you know, is more, more broad, more deep dive stories, but I really like having um, these kinds of stories captured uh, to go along with those. So you can see here, these I just typed up, printed them out, um, 
on my printer here at home in the three by four size. So each one of my photos uh, is adhered onto the journal card and then is paired with longer journaling um, on the side. And then these were some of the embellishments that were included in the kit that time. And I always like having see-through pieces there. Again, nice reminder that you doesn't have to go on Project Life necessarily. You can use divided page protectors in your in a regular album and have it hold uh, stories like this. So just a few more examples there and a couple um, of the other cards that were included with that kit. Again, the reminder that we do have these cards um, available digitally, even if we don't have the physical products uh, still available. So that was a look at 2017, 2018. And then I wanted to show you, let's see what we have here. So the last two years we have done uh, three by a three by eight album. So for 2019 and 2020, we did three by eight albums for this project. And so that's what I'm gonna show you next. Uh, this year we did make a change and we're gonna do four by six this time, which tends to be a more accessible size for a lot of people. I loved mixing it up and having, creating a home for this project and having it be able to live on its own. Uh, that's gonna depend for you on how you like to document. Um, if you wanna add it into a larger album, that's absolutely possible and something that you can do. So for 2019, let's go ahead and take a look. This um, We still do have a 20, we have this album available in the shop with the um, dividers here and everything. So I'll link that for you guys as well. If you like the three by eight size and you'd like to try that. I don't, I don't, we do, I don't think we have the kit available anymore for the actual cards, but we do have that digital version if you'd want to see that as well. So in 2019, the lens that we used for this first day which was February 26th was I believe morning afternoon and evening so capturing stories that happen in the morning capturing stories that happen happen in the afternoon and then capturing stories that happen in the evening and the album bundle and the kit was designed knowing that those were the the story lenses that we were going to use in advance so here you can see I am stamping directly onto the photo using stays on ink that's how I put the times on these ones again here is the card this one had a few different cards in it um, well one for morning one for afternoon one for evening and it also had dividers uh, divider tabs for each of those to again organize the stories that I'm telling over the course of the day so this looks like a snow day I also added in my own own journaling here. This is printed um, to the size of the page protectors in the 3x8 album. A couple other photos there of kids. And so this is just kind of a hourly. Actually, this one isn't even hourly. It was just as I went about my day, what were the stories that I saw, noticed, paid attention to, and wanted to include on here. And then I added a larger photo there. So looks like I had, what is this? One, two, three, four four or five photos for the morning, probably a similar number for the afternoon and then maybe less for the evening, so we'll see. Um, but everyday life stuff, right? Here's Erin probably telling Anna that she needs to put her dishes um, in the dishwasher, which is a story that I could tell today, again, still, like a couple years later. Uh, but the everyday stuff, right? The everyday things that are happening. So then we've got afternoon, a couple other pictures here with the time stamped on there, um, same here and here, and then again, making sure that I am including all of the words that I want to include. So sometimes with a three by four card, you may feel constrained. You may feel like that's not enough. Um, if that is the case, I really encourage you to look for a different option to be able to include the words that you actually want to include. Don't stop just because the journal journaling card uh, stops. There are so many other ways that you can add more to these albums if there's more that you want to add. So that's my storytelling for the um, afternoon there again just using the time as basically the bullet point right that's the bullet point for the story and then moving into evening and like I thought this is what usually happens I had a lot less to say about the evening in case you guys didn't know I am somebody that goes to bed really early like 8 30 is my time is when I would really like to go to bed uh, or at least get in bed and then you know be asleep not very long after that so that often impacts the time of day when I take uh, pictures as well so um, again another photo of girls there and then I did add in some gratitudes as well then moving into the second point part of the year so this is where in 2019 I started doing it twice a year uh, that felt like a good amount for me I think both prior to that it was probably three times a year so in this case the um, 
story lens was time. So just focusing on time, um, capturing the time, and then having a story to go along with it. These are three by eight cards that I adhered on to these uh, page dividers. So actually almost all of my, that's what I ended up doing in this one is I took the page protectors out I think is what happened. And I just used the dividers as um, the, the home or the background for my photos and for my journaling. Um, this is a three by eight card that I added. This part is added on top of there. So I printed out my journaling, uh, created a colored background there and then printed my journaling and then adhered it on top. So you can see just the different times during the course of the day. Obviously this one, my photos were very vertical and I knew that going into the day. So I I took when I was taking my photos uh, I kept that in mind as something to think about uh, through that process and some of my journaling is shorter and some of it's longer depending on what was happening over the course of the day and let's see I'm just clicking through here actually in this one uh, it was hourly but you can see where it was just different times during the hour so here this is like 8 o'clock so 842 was when I documented this is 9 o'clock it was 908 this is 10 o'clock, it was 10.15, and I added chipboard directly onto my photos. Again, this is all living outside of the page protector. So using a number stamp, using chipboard that was included in the kit, and then adding on my journaling. I love that picture too. And this would have been in October. And then here's one o'clock, and it looks like three o'clock, or two o'clock, three o'clock. And I liked adding in the color too. I thought that was really fun. Um, as a flip through there. So that is wrapping up that one. And then I just did um, a larger one at the end for the last one to talk about how I love today and then put powder paper on the back. So that's a look at the a three by eight version. That again was 2019. And then next up, let's talk about 2020, what we did in 2020. Again, using the three by eight album, uh, which was fun and I like that process. And we do have other three by eight albums, I believe. I know we have um, this one that actually has the title on it, but I think that we might have some other ones in the shop too, if you like this option. Uh, using page protectors and dividers here in this one, the first one was in March, and let's see if I had a story lens um, for this one. I assume that I probably did. I think it looks like, yeah, so this one was ING words again, and this is kind of me wanting to play outside of the page protectors. And so what I did here, um, I added some of the die cut pieces with a brad onto these uh, transparent dividers there. Again, knowing when I'm taking the photos, I knew that I was gonna want them to be mainly vertical. So waking Anna up, adding the chipboard on, and then what I decided to do was print out larger photos here um, and and then fold them in uh, as my documentation. And we also had some cute uh, half circle things there. Let's see, I'll just put one of these on here as we're talking through it. These are little um, paper clips from Tim Holtz. And then here's my journaling, right? So watching was the first one. The second one was working. So you can see that I wrote out my journaling by hand these off and then just included the photo of myself working at my table and added a little bit more journaling there but the longer journaling happens on the back this was fun because it allowed me to play with a few more patterns I used a variety of different pattern papers uh, from different manufacturers there that I felt like coordinated well with the the kit and the the season of the year this one the next one was wearing so talking about what I was wearing which looks like Birkenstocks and yoga pants, which is pretty normal. Again, using the half circle. And you can see in this one, um, which is something that I do a lot in, in, in any of these project albums, is often creating uh, a consistent design formula that I'm following. So you saw that in here. Um, somewhat in that four by four one that I showed you, but definitely in this one where I'm repeating the same thing for each of these story lenses or each of the topics where um, over the course of the day. So that one was wearing, this one is going. So talking about where we were going at that point in time. Let's see, what does this one say? This is, um, yeah, so a picture of me in the car, driving the car, highs and lows. I wonder what the date, on. I wanna look at the date. 
So this is March 5th last year. So that was a right before uh, lockdown started happening around here uh, and the staying home started happening. This one is listening. So I talked about listening to the girls uh, doing all of the things that they do, which is a variety of different crazy fun things. Um, and then let's see what's this one. Loving was the other one. And it looks like it says tonight we watched the movie Knives Out, which was great. If you haven't seen that, that's super fun. So taking a picture of all of us together again, this would have been a time where I would have set the camera up on the um, on our TV and then uh, use the self timer to be able to take a picture of all of us there together. Okay, and then the second lens that we did in 2020 again was gratitude and or thankful. Uh, like I said, I always love to bring that in. So it's always something that is top of mind um, for, for me. So here with this one, thankful, what I decided to do here is I took the cards, again, I took the card, again, I took the cards and I added photos on top of them. You can see that that is something that I really like and I continue to like that. I continue to design cards where that can happen. Uh, and then I added my journaling on top with vellum. So I've got the vellum on top, the half circles that you saw that I added into these fold out pages. I also added on the bottom here where I cut a little bit more off and I used a stamp that was included in the kit last year. So then um, the other thing, you know, I identified a variety of things that I was thankful for. You can also see that I did black and white photos in this particular time. So lots of options are available to us when we do a project like this. So again, same thing all along. This is washi tape that's holding the vellum, printed on vellum, vellum journaling with the thankful for on the bottom. So kind of a fun repeat. I love how this one turned out. This is probably um, one of my favorite ones. And when I didn't have space for the half circle element that I had added in for consistency, I just left it off, right? So sometimes I had more words and I adjusted my font size to make the font size smaller. Um, but yeah, so thankful for lots of different things. And this would have been in the second half of the year. Let's see, what was the date for this one? It's in September. So definitely knowing all of the things of, of 2020 by that point in time. So that is a look. And then that also had the do not lose hope uh, quote card on there and then more. So I, what I really want you guys to see in showing you these different examples is that there's lots of different ways to approach this project. You can also just do it on Instagram. You could have a, a private blog where you keep these stories and you just upload all the pictures that you took over the course of the day. Uh, you don't have to have the products, right? There's lots of, of ways that you can approach this, but I wanted you to see the different ways that I have done it over the years and that there isn't a right or a wrong and anybody can participate um, in this. So just a quick note for this year and a reminder again, March 9th is going to be, that's a Tuesday, it's going to be the first documenting day and this year the two story lenses that I am using um, include, actually let me just pull out the kit for, for you so I make sure that I know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, we've got another video here both on YouTube and my blog that shows uh, walkthroughs of these. So the two the two story lenses I'm using this time are around here. So you can see that I've got a bunch of around here cards where again, I can put the photo on the bottom, right? If I end up choosing that as the method that I want to use, or I can write journaling or I can do a combination of both. So around here, um, that will be one of them. So as I go about my day, my documenting day, that those are the kinds of stories that I will be looking for. What's happening around here? Who are we right now? What are the things I'm encountering over the course of this day? And then the other one that we're going to do uh, in 2021, it, 2020, 2021 um, is today. And it's basically today I, or today we, or today you. So lots of different options. Um, today you is a project that I did many years ago and I've done layouts for that one as well. And it's kind of similar it's just documenting what did somebody that you love do today what did your what did your kid do today what did your pet do today right today you woke up at this time today you slept in your basket in my office all day lots of um, different kinds of ways that we can tell stories so those are the two documenting lenses that I am going to be using for um, 2021 we will have a digital version of this available uh, as well that will come out on February 5th I think uh, we do all of our digital releases on the first Friday of the month and almost all physical products we create are turned into digital products uh, which is awesome for those of you 
that like to print at home, like to have a little bit more flexibility. And also for you guys to be able to go back if there were designs that you really liked from the past, you can always grab those and print them out. All right, long video today, lots to talk about, lots to um, explore and look back on. If you have questions about this project, let me know. Uh, feel free to leave a comment below. And if you're liking these videos, I would love for you to subscribe. I'll see you back here next week with another uh, episode of Craft Story. Thank you.